Hi, this is Kyle Ruddy from VMware, and I'll be walking through the new installation process for VMware PowerCLI 6.5.1. First, I'll start with how to uninstall previous versions of PowerCLI. Next, I'll cover how to install this new version of PowerCLI with PowerShell version 5. Then lastly, I'll go through the install process of PowerCLI with PowerShell versions 3 or 4. Taking a look at how to uninstall PowerCLI, let's jump into the lab. We'll start by going to the control panel, then selecting Programs and Features. We'll then scroll towards the bottom, selecting VMware PowerCLI. Right-click on that and then select Uninstall. Verify the uninstall request by clicking on Yes. After a few moments, the uninstall will be complete and we can close out of the control panel. At this point, there's one more thing we should check, and that's for any prior PowerCLI installation folders. We can do this by opening Windows Explorer and browsing to Program Files x86, VMware, and then Infrastructure. If there are an existing PowerCLI folder, delete it. We're now ready to install PowerCLI 6.5.1. So let's start with the system running PowerShell 5.0. We'll verify the version by calling the $PS version table variable where we can see that we are indeed running PowerShell version 5.0. Checking to ensure no prior versions of PowerCLI are found, run get dash module VMware asterisk then dash list available. Hopefully there should be no output. We can then find the new PowerCLI module in the PowerShell gallery with the find module commandlet, specifying a name parameter with VMware.PowerCLI. In this case, this system is running an older version of NuGet, and we've been prompted to upgrade it to the latest version, so enter Y to accept the update. Once complete, the find module command should return the VMware.PowerCLI module, which is found in the PowerShell gallery. We can then move forward and install the module with the install module commandlet, specifying the VMware.PowerCLI name, and then setting the installation scope to be only for the current user. Setting the scope for all users will require administrative privileges. One item to note, if you haven't already configured it, the PowerShell gallery will show up as an untrusted repository. This can be modified with the set ps repository commandlet, but for our purposes we can just enter Y to trust it during the install. The installation process will now begin by downloading and extracting the modules to the proper PowerShell module paths. This could take a while depending on your internet connection. Once complete, we'll be returned to our prompt where we can verify that the install was successful by running the get module VMware asterisk list available command once again. This time there should be roughly 18 items returned. We can now start using PowerCLI. So to do that, I want to show off one really cool new feature, which is the auto loading process. So start by running a get module command and verifying that no PowerCLI modules have already been imported. Next, run the connect-vi server commandlet. We can see that tab complete works and the parameters show up as normal. So for my lab system, I'll specify the vCenter server name, some pre-stored credentials, and then for the warning action, we'll choose silently continue because this is a lab environment and it's using a self-signed certificate. Our vCenter session has connected and we can then run another get module to see that four modules have automatically been loaded, making this extremely convenient to use going forward. So let's move on to the next section, using an older version of PowerShell to install PowerCLI. Now again, we're going to verify the version by calling the $PS version table variable where we can see that we're running PowerShell version 4. Checking to ensure that no prior versions of PowerCLI are found, run get module VMware asterisk dash list available. Hopefully there should be no output. We will then attempt to use the find module commandlet specifying a name of VMware.PowerCLI. In this case, we receive an error and we'll need to download and install PowerShell get. This can be done through the PowerShellGallery.com website by heading to that and then selecting the bottom of three blue boxes listed as get PowerShell get for PS3 and 4. This will take us to a new page where we can download the package management module by clicking on the red download button, then choosing the applicable operating system version, and then clicking next. Once the download is complete, run the MSI file. Click next to start the installation process. Read through the license agreement. 
Accept it and click Next. Then click Install. When the install completes, click Finish and close out of the browser and return to the PowerShell session. We will now be able to rerun the prior find module command. However, the system will be running an older version of NuGet, and we've been prompted to upgrade it to the latest version, so enter Y to accept the update. Once complete, the find module should return the VMware.PowerCLI module, which is found in the PowerShell gallery. We can then install this module with the install module commandlet, specifying the VMware.PowerCLI name and setting the installation scope to only be for the current user. The install process should begin by downloading and extracting the modules to the proper PowerShell module path. Be aware that this may take a little while. Once complete, we'll be returned to our prompt where we can verify that the install was successful by running the get module VMware asterisk dash list available command once again. We should see roughly 18 items returned. And now we can start using PowerCLI. So to do that, I want to show off one really cool new feature, which is the auto loading process. So start by running a get module command and verifying that no PowerCLI modules have already been imported. Next, run the connect vi server commandlet. We can see that tab complete works and the parameters show up all as normal. Within my lab environment, I specify the vCenter server name, some previously stored credentials, and then set the warning action parameter to silently continue because this is using a self-signed certificate. Our vCenter server has connected and we can run another get module to see that four modules have actually been automatically loaded, making this extremely convenient. And that's the installation process for VMware PowerCLI 6.5.1. Thank you.